Welcome to Games from Folk Tales, a podcast that mixes historical research and tabletop role-playing settings. I'm your host, Timothy Ferguson, and this week, the last of our four episodes on the Ballads of Goethe. Thanks again to the LibriVox recorders. Shall we start with a potential candidate for a cursed treasure? The Minstrel by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Read by Alan Mapstone what sounds are those i hear along the drawbridge sweetly stealing within our hall i'd have that song that minstrel measure pealing then forth the little footpage hide when he came back the king he cried bring in the aged minstrel good even to you lordlings all fair ladies all good even lo star on star within this hall i see a radiant heaven in hall so bright with noble light tis not for thee to feast thy sight old man look not around thee he closed his eyne he struck his lyre in tones with passion laden till every gallant's eye shot fire and down looked every maiden the king enraptured with his strain held out to him a golden chain in guerdon of his harping the golden chain give not to me for noble breasts its glances who meets and beats thy enemy amid the shock of lances or give it to thy chancellor let him its golden burden bear among his other burdens i sing as sings the bird whose note the leafy bough is heard on the song that falters from my throat for me is ample guerdon yet i'd ask one thing and i might a draught of brave wine sparkling bright within a golden beaker the cup was brought he drained its lees o oh, draught that warms me cheerly blessed is the house where gifts like these are counted trifles merely lo when you prosper think on me and thank your god as heartily as for this draught i thank you the cavalier's choice a note from the translators, quote, This lively little ballad occurs in one of Goethe's operas, very charming compositions, which probably are less read than they deserve. It is not altogether original, being evidently founded on a popular Scottish ditty called indiscriminately Captain Wedderburn's Courtship or The Laird of Roslin's Daughter, in which precisely the same questions are propounded and answered. Truth compels us to say that in point of merit, the superiority lies with the Scottish ballad. This being a case of disputed property, or rather comnity, the translator has allowed himself more license in rendering than has been used in any other instance in the present collection. The Cavalier's Choice by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Read by Belinda McReynolds It was a gallant cavalier of honour and renown and all to seek a lady love he rode from town to town till at a widow woman's door he drew the rein so free for at her side the knight espied her comely daughters three well might he gaze upon them for they were fair and tall ye never have seen fairer maids in bower nor yet in hall small marvel if the gallant's heart beat quicker in his breast twas hard to choose and hard to lose how might he wail the best now maidens pretty maidens mine who'll read me riddles three and she who answers best of all shall be mine own lady i ween they blushed as maidens do when such rare words they hear now speak thy riddles if thou wilt thou gay young cavalier what's longer than the longest path first tell ye that to me and tell me what is deeper yet than is the deepest sea and tell me what is louder far than is the loudest horn and tell me what hath sharper point than in the sharpest thorn. And tell me what is greener yet than greenest grass on hill. 
and tell me what is crueler than a wicked woman's will. The eldest and the second maid, they mused and thought a while, but the youngest, she looked upward and spoke with merry smile. Oh, love is surely longer far than the longest paths that be, and hell, they say, is deeper yet than is the deepest sea. The roll of thunder is more loud than is the loudest horn, and hunger it is worse to bear than sharpest wound of thorn. The copper sweat is greener yet than is the grass on hill, and the foul fiend he is crueler than any woman's will. He leapt so lightly from his steed, he took her by the hand. Sweet maid, my riddles thou hast read, be lady of my land. The eldest and the second maid, they pondered and were dumb, and there perchance are waiting yet till another wooer come. Then maidens, take this warning word, be neither slow nor shy, but always when a lover speaks, look kindly and reply. A note from my own reading. In the Scottish variants, it's the woman who asks the riddles and the man who answers them. This may make her the same type of fairy that I made up out of whole cloth for one of my earliest Ars Magica submissions, based on the riddle rhyme Scarborough Fair. I'd also like to know where copper sweat came from in this translation. The Scots version I've seen used the word verdigris, and that seems a better translation. Copper sweating is, I believe, the process that Australians would call soldering, or if you are an American, soldering, I believe. Copper pipes oxidise to a deep green at the joins due to a reaction between the flux and the air. Verdigris is made historically mostly by women as a dye, and the traditional medieval method is to place a piece of copper in a sealed container hanging above vinegar so that crystals of verdigris, which is a copper salt, form on the surface. The King in Thula by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Read by Alan Mapstone A king there was in Thula kept troth unto the grave. The maid he loved so truly a goblet to him gave and ever set before him at banquet was the cup and saddening thoughts came o'er him whene'er he took it up when death with him had spoken his treasures ranged he there and all save one dear token he gifted to his heir once more to royal wassail his peers he summoned all around were knight and vassal thronged in his father's hall then rose the grand old rover again the cup drained he and bravely flung it over into the weltering sea he saw it flashing falling and settling in the main heard death unto him calling he never drank again your saga may vary <laughs>